it might be better for our planet and its turtles to entrust the efficient energy flow to AI. Where does the machine come in handy and what is stopping us from using it more often? We're going to talk to Josephine Hintz, who's been researching exactly that. Hi, Joel. Hi, Marcia. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> um, what is it that you're researching at the moment? So at the moment, I'm looking at different cities in Europe and uh, specifically I'm interested in how they're making first experiences and strides on using AI for climate change mitigation. That means how to reduce emissions in the city. So far, what are some of the most interesting findings you've had on your journey? For me, urban spaces are where things are happening, where we all live our lives, where so many things are happening all at once. If you think about it from a data perspective, it's so rich of trying to understand what everyone is going through, where resources are flowing, how traffic is moving. And so I'm asking questions around how to use that data for good, how to tackle some of the challenges that are faced in cities, such as looking at the climate crisis, um, how to adapt to it, how to also um, use AI to make the mitigation efforts more efficient. So to really make sure that we are reducing emissions at the most effective um, points. And so far, um, some of the examples are mainly in buildings and um, traffic, like transport and mobility, those are some of the key sectors because in buildings or like the energy sector, um, the majority of emissions are created through the heating systems in buildings. I think it's between 30 and 50% of emissions are created through the heating in buildings and the inefficiency of that. So it's really interesting to explore how algorithms um, can be used to manage buildings much more effectively while still providing the comfort we also need um, for the, its users. And how about Berlin? Where are we currently using um, AI? In Berlin, being the capital of Germany, I have to say not a lot. Mm -hmm. um, first experiments are happening. So um, there are some examples of evaluating how street trees should be watered most um, efficiently, um, saving water at the same time. Um, in the reality that most street trees are going through a lot of stress, especially during the heat wave times in summer. Um, so it's really important to maintain the health of street trees because they're so important for um, the ecosystems, for our own well-being. Um, and there are other examples around uh, route planning when it comes to the waste trucks in the city, the cleaning vehicles, um, to, to optimize those um, routes. And generally speaking, it's a very new space. So there's not a lot of experiments or like experience or scale. It's very early days, which is also exciting because there is space for innovation. What would be the uh the main use case or the next step for using AI in Berlin? So right now it's very hard to say what is the next use case because right now what we need is people who understand large like data sets, understand also the reality of cities and to have a look how that can come together because I think Sure, data is the new gold, right? But actually understanding and like how to analyze it, that is what's needed and to match that with trying to find solutions for the most pressing challenges. Would you say that um, what's stopping us from being better at using AI in uh, city planning right now is also lack of resources? Definitely, I think it's the number one challenge because it's no secret that public sector jobs um, lack in competitiveness to private sector jobs. Um, and I think cities are slowly acknowledging that they need expertise, they need those 
um, bridge builders, they need those um, people who are educated in like data analytics or data science, um, know how to code, but also understand um, public administration, they understand urban um, spaces, they understand um, particip participatory uh, methods for city planning and are able to translate between those worlds. I think that's it's such a big gap right now. If you were talking to um, future software engineers who would like to uh, support solving some of those issues, um, what is the best way um, to get into into the area of uh, um, of working with cities to improve sustainability, and what what can they do to make uh, the best out of it? I love that question so much because right now we're at this turning point where either we can build AI and like machine learning to support sustainability solutions, like tackling the climate crisis, or we can uh, take the other path and um, make the existing systems that have led us to this multiple crisis situation um, much more efficient and optimize that. Um, so asking these questions of how can we use ML or like AI for good, that's the first step and that's amazing already. I think um, I would encourage everyone to maybe participate in some kind of um, experiment hackathon that's organized by the city, join um, some kind of um, innovation agency that's focusing on digitalization but is collaborating with the city. There's, for instance, the City Lab in Berlin. Uh, they do amazing work. Um, and also finding those use cases and to show that there's that opportunity um, to use digital tools to make the urban life much better and to create these livable and thriving cities. I think it's so important to communicate well and to collaborate and help each other understand um, the different perspectives and to also be very mindful about technology being a tool, not the solution per se, that um, creating a digital tool um, also needs um, thoughts around um, behavior change, like what is the, the social side to that. So to be very mindful that putting in place a uh, technology-based tool is not going to solve everything. It's a tool that can be used in a wider process. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> we are in Berlin, one of the greenest cities in Europe, surrounded by tech and information that's waiting to help us make our planet breathe better. We now have access to enormous data sets that could help us guide our decisions and find places for improvement. We can use this information to help our public transportation function better. We can build simulations that can navigate and help us figure out whether our ideas make sense in practice. Coolest of all, we could use AI to build platforms of communication with different communities where people could share their feedback and feed that into the information that we then later use for decision making. Unfortunately, way behind our tech possibilities are administrative processes of cities and our thought through approach to using AI and ethics. More on that next week. But hey, can you see something around you that could function smarter? Well, you could code it. And do you know where you can learn how to do that? If you like the video, like it. If you'd like to stay tuned for more of our content, subscribe to our channel. Send us love and see you at 42 Berlin.